Welcome to the Go Time Podcast. Go Time Podcast. With your host, Todd Martin. So I had this, I, I, I talked about this. One of my favorite uh, interviews was um, with uh, Bill, who's a, um, a, a, was a PGA Tour Golf Player of the Year, right? And one of the things that he talked about, and so in, in mine, I compete and I compete, and it may be a couple of weeks before I compete again, right? And I've got like a five-minute run. But um, but he's playing on the tour, and he's got like stroke after stroke. And same thing with you, right? You got throw after throw. So do you find yourself staying in that spot, or like do you practice like once you deliver a throw and somebody hits a grounder off of it, like and 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 they you get one on base? How do you clear that for the next batter, or how do you clear like you didn't hit where you thought you were going to, and 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 they got the bat on the ball and it goes foul, but you know like boom, how do you get that out of your head? For your next pitch, it's being honest with the situation. Again, it's being present. If 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 I throw a good pitch and he hits a double down the line, uh-huh. I made my pitch. Tip your hat. He gets paid a lot of money to hit, right? right? So he did his job. <laughs> but now, if I throw a pitch right down the middle and he pops it up, and my shortstop catches it, I don't say good pitch. I say mm, no, make a better one because you got away with it. And he just put a bad swing on it, and you've got to make an adjustment because that's not going to make you successful. What's going to make you successful is making that pitch that that guy hit a double on. The double was not in your control. The double probably wasn't in the hitter's control. He just put a swing on it, and the ball went to where no one was at. But that doesn't mean it's a bad pitch. So for me, if I make a good pitch, I let myself know I made a good pitch. And it's the same with everything else. Anytime you do what you're supposed to do, if you execute it and it didn't work out, that has nothing to do with changing what you're doing. That just means that sometimes bad luck is act- it's part of it. The more you do something. Part of it. Like you can't have good luck without bad luck. That's right. You, no, it, it's Athletes, athleticism, sports are not. A to B equals C. They're not. They're not a given. That's where analytics and all this stuff going into all these baseball things are, and they're they're analyzing everything and saying, well, the computers say that if you if this pitcher faces this guy, he's gonna. But it's not A to B equals C, and there's always a percentage it will not work. It's not guaranteed. Nothing is guaranteed. So when you do it and it and it doesn't work out in your favor, but ninety percent of the time it will. You just had the one. One one out of ten that didn't happen. That's why they're called odds. Making the pitch because the next nine guys are going to yeah. get out. Like you don't go. Oh, I got. I, I got to do something different. You don't do anything different. Mm-mm. But if you throw the ball down the middle and he pops it up, you got an out. There's where your odds went back into your favor. But it's not where you want to live because they're going to hit homers right there. So you have to just no, be honest with yourself. Thinking. Yeah, I mean that's a good way to look at it. Even your world, like, I don't know, roping, the freaking cow comes out and you charge it and you make a bad toss, but it happened that that cow cut right into the freaking rope. It worked, but you should know, eh, I kind of got lucky on that. Yeah. I don't need to do that all the time. Like, I need to do better. I I, I, I need to stay consistent with what I, when, you know, with the right way or that, whatever. That's whatever how you should do it. Yeah. Like, you stayed on a bull, but you really, I watched his, I was I was up in uh, Dallas not too long ago uh, at the American Rodeo watching the PBR and and I was watching these guys get ready and you can tell where they're like they're trying to get into this thing and they're like no I don't I don't like it and and so okay we're not we're not pulling the gate yet like yeah no I don't like it I don't like it I don't like it okay get it but then I've seen some guys where they're up there and that you can see they didn't like it and they're like okay okay go. Never, never not one time did they yeah. ride that bull for eight seconds no no and so you think as an athlete you think never do it until you're ready you're you're not ready to ride the bull you're not ready to ride the bull like but that comes experience right i mean 100 percent comes so with experience. so so it's i think something that's really really like something to point out on your career right was you know so that many years in and how many years before you found your niche, your biggest success. Seven. That's in, I was like, so how many guys shut it off before then or crushed themselves because of that? That's right. And, and it was four years in the minor leagues to develop the pitches that I need to get to the big leagues. And then it was seven years of good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. Some of it was, hey, God breathed. Hey, I never got sent out. 
I know guys that got sent back to the minor leagues with better numbers than I had. For, but when I was with the Royals, they didn't have anybody better. So it's like, we're going to let you fail up here, man, because we got no one up back down there to take your spot. So learn the game up here. So I was able to fail a lot more. But I, that was five and a half years with the Royals before I got traded to the Rockies. Wow. And then I had a great year um, with the Rockies uh, in 2007. Had a free agent contract in 2008 with the Reds. And was hit and miss, hit and miss still, but never consistent. I was a power pitcher, threw hard, threw a good hook. And then it got to the point where it was like, uh, I had I had a had a uh, bullpen mate named David Weathers. We called him Stormy. He said, "You need to start throwing a sinker." He the sink your four seam curveball. It it, it it it's you're gonna get beat too much on the long ball. Like you got to keep the ball in the ballpark. And I remember switching to a sinker, and he showed it to me. And when I started throwing it, my all of a sudden a ground ball, ground ball, ground ball. Hitters, literally hitters that I'd faced for years are running by me on the mound. And they say, Wait, did you just throw me a sinker? And I was like, yeah. They're like, when did you get that? I said, yesterday. <laughs> you know, like, it was new. Yeah. But it, all of a sudden it was successful. And then I was like, wait a minute. This is who I am. I'm going to throw a sinker and a curve and a split finger. That's who I'm going to be. That's what I'm going to work on. And who helped me with that the year before uh, was um, uh, I started developing a little bit of that thought process in Colorado, uh, and that's why I had a really good year. But I learned to be okay with changing the process, but then finding out who I was and being comfortable and getting that this is who I am niche. And after a few, you get seven, eight years in the big leagues, they've seen you. You're not going to you're facing the same guy for seven years. You're not going to trick him. Right. This is what he throws. So now you have to start to make adjustments to stay longer in the big leagues, or you're going to quit. You're going to go home. You're going to be like, right. I can't make it. I can't cut it. And they always say it's easier to get to the big leagues than it is to stay because you don't face in the minors. You're facing these guys going up and down, moving around. New faces in all the time. big leagues. You're facing the same guys for your career. They're not going anywhere. Like you're going to start facing guys. I mean, I face the same guys. I face the same lineup of the Dodgers pretty much every year for the seven years. Like, I didn't have anything to hide, right? Mm -hmm. You just had to execute pitches. Like, that. it's hard to hit no matter what, right? right. So, for me... And that's really important is to, to know from a pitcher's point of view is that it's hard to hit. It's hard... You have advantage. Yeah. And uh, well, and realize that. Yeah. You know, like, Hall like, of Famer fails 70% of the time. If you fail 70% of the time in your job, you're probably fired. Like... Right, normal life. Yeah, yeah, you're a hall of famer if you fail seventy percent. The big like you have to understand that failure is a teachable moment. It is not a bad thing. Competing like that will help you. So for me, you had him on. I think you had David Cook on uh, not too long coming, ago. Yeah, he, I mean, is he coming out? Maybe yeah, he's gonna. Be I know you had him that. recently as a yeah, guest. Yeah, and yeah, he I, has he changed my career. Like. He, he, I mean, he wrote that book, uh, the sacred journey, which is seven days in utopia and his, his thoughts. And I'm sure you're going to talk about it in your podcast. So his, his, how he breaks down the athlete is literally what I did from 07 till when my career ended and it changed my entire career. And it was all the mental sports psychology of the game and how to some of it we've already talked about. Uh -huh. He just has a different way of approaching it. But it's what I learned, and that book is still on my, in my in my library. His book Greatness is still in my library. Yeah. Like everything that he's written, I mean, I had stuff on my glove that were in his book. I wrote it on my glove. Like, it, it, but it, but it's but it but it's it's so true that there's so much talent out there mm -hmm. that is not what's going to make you successful. Nope. It's the mental approach in your brain and how you ch take on life, how you take on storms how you handle the quote unquote curveball that gets thrown at you in competition, in relationship, in family life, that's going to make your legacy what it is. It's who you are and how you handle situations that come at you that are not easy. Well, I think that's something that's really important to, to acknowledge and to think about is that um, 
and and so part of the reason why I do like I enjoy doing this from all different angles of sports, from every different type of sport and business and whatever, like life period, right? Is that we can hear the same thing fifty million times, fifty million different ways, and then all of a sudden, once you hear it, it clicks. You know, so like so you hear it from somebody who's just articulate with it, or just you know, and you and you go, like, man, I've been being told that like for the past five years from you know my other coach or yeah. whatever, and then all of a sudden it's like ah. Oh, I get it, but it's the repetition of hearing it. It's like advertising. You know, you got to have advertising in front of you for so many times before you actually, somebody acts on advertising, That's right. right? Well, it's the same thing with this. Like you, you hear it, you hear it, you hear it, but all of a sudden it, it, the situation, enough experience or whatever it is that it clicks, right? That it's like, oh, yep. and that's what I love about this is that it, it, I don't, I don't have to play baseball, right? But to understand and get a better view of how to how to frame my brain around competition, how to frame my brain around giving a speech. That's right. Right? It's all the same stuff, right? But a big part of it is perspective. That's right. Right? Having the right and, – and that, that was like it's huge for me to, to realize that is that you're sipping up to the mound going, I'm in the advantage. It's hard to hit. That's right. Like it is hard to hit. So if it's that hard, I mean, you know, like top – level you know great hitter you know is not even you know is 70 percent failure that's right that's huge that's a huge aspect of like man so he's got to work his way out of a hole yep yep. gives you a huge different a much better view of a reality when you're up there yeah and and hitters will do the exact opposite they'll say they'll go up there and they'll be like all right i have this is what he throws this is what i think he throws in these counts uh, from what I'm watching, he's not throwing this pitch very good today, so he's probably not going to throw that in a important count. So I'm going to look to this pitch in this area in this count, and they're hoping that 30 percent of the time they're right, or they're hoping that, or they're hoping that um, what they'll do is they'll groom a certain area and they'll be like, okay, if he doesn't, if he throws it right here, I'm going to smoke that ball, but if he doesn't throw it right there, I'm going to foul it off to stay alive, or I'm going to take it hoping that he'll miss in that spot, right? Hoping that he'll he'll miss this. And that's how they approach hitting. And they got to do the same thing to keep them like, okay, I got I to gotta groom my swing to hit this ball. I'm not going to miss it. If you, and that's why when you do throw it there and they foul it straight back, they'll be like, oh. And, and, you and can they get in their head with that too. Yeah, because you know that that was their spot. Right where you see guys that they'll swing and they'll foul a certain pitch off, they know it's a strike, but they got to stay alive. They're not getting upset about it. They're like, I'm just fouling it off. But it's the one spot that they hit that you throw a ball and they miss. That's when you'll see them like, you know, like they they, they will get upset, and yeah. it's because that that's You're like using the mental game, right? Yep, it's a chess match. It's it's a that's back and sweet. forth. It is literally cat and mouse. It's playing chess. It's they think I'm going to throw it here, so I'm going to throw it here. And that hitter is probably thinking, he thinks I'm thinking he's going to throw it here. I think he's going to throw it here because of it. So I'm going to go. I mean, I've seen Manny Ramirez, one of the best hitters in the game of all time. He would swing and miss by a foot. Like, I mean, we're talking the ball would hit the glove. They'd swing and miss, right? And he'd be like, he's thinking, I'm going to get that same pitch. Because everybody's thinking, why would I throw anything else? You can't hit that pitch. He'd do it to set you up. So he'd swing and miss a pitch by a lot and then get right back in there and say, same pitch is coming, and he would smoke it because he's playing the chess game. Yeah. He's saying, I'm going to set the pitcher up to throw the pitch that I want to see, oh, and then I'm smart. not. So it's like literally this cat and mouse Back and forth, and you've got to sit there, and your brain has got to sit there and like process all that every time. And so that's where it comes back to my controllables, my uncontrollables. I'm going to execute. He might have swung and missed by a mile, but now that I know that, I might throw that same look and pitch, but maybe it's going to be a ball. Like he's, I throw a curveball for a strike, he swings and misses at it, thinking he's going to get another curveball. So in his brain, he's looking for a curveball. So I quit going. Well, I'm going to throw him a fastball. No, I'm going to throw you a curveball. I'm going to throw a curveball that's a little lower that's going to hit the dirt. But your brain has already said, as soon as you see a curveball, pull the trigger. And they only have, what, a quarter of a second to make a decision. So I throw it, 
he swings it and misses it, and he's frustrated. But it's like you you already told yourself to swing <laughs> if you've got this spin coming. So I started using that, right? So it's a constant adjustment, but it's in all areas of life. It's yeah, it all is. You always are making an adjustment to life. And for me, life is how do I handle uncontrollables? And it's you just don't handle them. You just adjust to the uncontrollable, and you continue to say, okay, this – my marriage failed after 22 years. Terrible, right? Like it was a it was a tough time for my kids, for everybody. Everybody was hurt. Yeah. Okay, but I can't crawl in a hole. Yeah. So now I use baseball. Like, okay, what's my controllable? My my uncontrollables. The marriage died. I, I mean, I, I I it wasn't something I wanted, right? It, you could say all that, but then you go, okay, with the controllables, I got three boys to raise well, in a healthy way. Yeah, I got life to live. I'm 40 years old. I got another 50 years of my life. I can't just sit and be a lump on a log, start a brewery, be a part of community. And, you know, realizing that you do that, like it's it, so, so I think and I, like next or this month is like mental health month. Right. Yep. And I think that some, that something that like, I have to come back over here. We're going to have to do this again. Yeah. But, um, I think one of the things that we miss on that is that like what you're talking about is making a career, not a small, short three years in and out that's or five right. year in and out and then finding something else to do. But how do you make a, you know, a like 15, 19, 18, 19 year career that's right. in something that you love doing, right? right? Is, is learning to adapt to what, what situations are giving you. Right. And it speaks to the rest of your life on that's everything right. else. And even more so it speaks into your life of your own kids, that's right? right? Because now you're teaching them like y- 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 if you did, crawl into a hole because of, you know, oh my God, my career is different and now I don't have any identity or I don't, you know, my, my, my marriage ended and went and now like now I didn't lose my identity, identity in that. That's right. Like you teach your kids how to be failures in that or how That's to, right. n- or how not to handle that. Yeah. Not be able to life. move on. Yeah, yeah. Life. Like your identity life. is not necessarily everything that happens to you. Your identity is who you are. How and you act in the, in the face of those. That's things. exactly it. Uh. And, and the boys and people in general, any kind of relationship it doesn't have to be a marriage it could be a friendship like things yep. went bad you got a buddy that you knew for 20 years you don't get along it ended you got to be able to say okay why did it end well then because were you being a jerk was he being a jerk was a miscommunication how do i and honesty it? in it yeah like, on honesty in it honesty yeah, with it. honesty with the owning and what it is and on, being honest with yourself That's about right. about what you are doing when you're pitching or what you how you are handling yeah. the game but also realizing I think this is the coolest part about everything to do with sports, right? People look at it and go like sports is just sports, but you know, it's, it's, we got to, you know, academia is where you're going to learn it all. Like, you know, man, there's so many facets of life, right. For us to be able to take and use what we learn in every facet of sports, right. Because it is a reflection of life. That's right. Completely. Right. That's right. And if we look at it that way, we can apply it in so many different ways. I think that is what I think where we're having like a bit of a crisis, you know, now and we can look at it and go like oh maybe the the pandemic caused a whole bunch of stuff and whatever which you know i don't i don't doubt that it's created a bunch of a lot of mental stuff right but but i think it's really actually brought to light what was happening already right but um but i think one of the things that would happen okay i'm how much of an impact a coach or a player that you're watching, that you're a fan of, right? Yep. How, you know, how much you impact, you know, your fans, right? Yeah. And, and then they see you and, well, so you you wrote a book now yep. and you've got, well, another book, right? You yep. have a couple. Um, but, um, but having something like that, you're showing a reflection of like, what your career is at. That's right. Like you, it's an extension of your career. It's not another career. It's just an extension of your career That's right. because your career has like a never stop kind of deal, adapting, changing, using your experience to grow, to grow your family, to grow your yourself. And the role of a father, right. Yeah. Is huge. Yeah. yeah mentor, and I think man. we are, we are losing out of the big portion of a lot of the issues that we have is a lack of good father, fathership. That's uh, right. You know, fatherhood. And that is for a lot of kids that don't have that it's done through coaching too. That's right. Like coaching is huge. Yep. I mean, that is an under, unsung hero of our culture, right? That's is right. the coach, the impact of a coach and a teacher, right? That's Not, right. On, on, and that's why sports are so good. 
is because you can, you know, everything is based on a grade in academia. But when we go in, in you can look at so many different facets of, of uh, reflections of life in, in sports and understanding how to deal with adversity. It is something that kids will learn and can learn if, if it's brought to their attention properly, right? That you don't necessarily identify yourself with your losses, but it is opportunities for you to grow. And it's a reflection of the, your marriage. It's a reflection right. of what, you know, how you're going to raise your kids, how you're going to do, how you're going to act whenever you're dealing with adversity and work. I mean, it is, it's life. Yep. Right. That, that's a hundred percent. You're a hundred percent right on that, man. I, 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 you're, it's so true. Uh, coaches, I just sat at the champion high school thing, uh, um, uh, the other day with my son, he's going into high school next year. And we were talking, we were doing the athlete introduction stuff. And that's what the coaches said. They said, listen, uh, parents, you have to understand that your kids now are going into high school. This is a different bird. The coaches are probably going to spend more time with your kids than you are. Yeah, going into sports. So during how important that, is it that role? That that's coach. right. Then that's what they're saying. We're gonna he, and and this football coach, he ran the whole thing. He, well, he introduced all the coaches, but he's one of the he's one of the main, you know, kind of introducing all the sports. And he said he looked at all the students, and he said we 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 want a certain level here. And by the way, there's a bunch of you in here. You all are going to be getting a haircut because you're not going to be allowed to perform with that kind of stuff. And you can wear an earring like that. And he looked right at some kids. You can wear those earrings until you walk through my doors. Then they're coming off. And I was like, for the first time in like three or four years, I told yeah. my son, I'm actually excited about sports. This guy finally has said, no, Yeah, we're not putting up with whatever. It's, hey, we're going to run a certain program a certain way and we're going to do stuff to excellence and we're going to hold you to it. Your parents are awesome, and parents, thank you so much for all you've poured into your kids. But realize, this is not Little League anymore. This is not YMCA. Oh. This is now developing your kids to become men, and I want, uh, I, I, and I want, and and I want them to know it. And you're going to have to know it because I'm going to spend a lot of time with your kids, and this is how we run our ship. And I'm like, this is great because yeah. coaches need to be mentors, and they need to help, and and we've got parents that need to back coaches and say, listen, you, they're going to train you to learn how to compete. Yep. I'm going to help you at home, but now I'm kind of giving you over to a guy that's got to get you. And some of these kids are going to go play college ball and this is their job. This isn't a volunteer thing at a high school. This is literally their job now. Yeah. And so it's super important and I'm really, really excited, but it's still important for dads to be there to back the coaches. Yes. Or to continue to coach them at home the same way and to hold them to boundaries, responsibilities, consequences. We don't want to do that now. No. I just watched a video on a guy. He's a, a UFC fighter. And I posted and I said, this is who exactly not to be. This guy stood up on front of a microphone and he said, listen, I got a seventh month. I have a girlfriend that's seven months pregnant. I don't yeah. care. I saw that. Dude. I have. Yeah, I have a, I have a kid in Brazil. Don't care. Yeah. All I care about is my legacy. What legacy is that? Yeah, you're, yeah, you'll find that's a fleeting legacy. You know, you know so I, I, I heard something said once about, um, about love, right? And that um, love has boundaries, right? Absolutely love does. has, and it's, it's, it is important to understand that being told no or that this is not acceptable is just as loving, if not more loving than allowing whatever at will, right? So Absolutely. those, those, that's important to understand that that coach is putting limitations in, and those kids are not going to think it that way and see it that way, but they're at a stage in their life where they're trying to experience things and, and try things out and, and see who they are because they don't know who they are. But it's important that we put, fathers have got to put boundaries on your sons and daughters absolutely because if not then when they get into a marriage later on that marriage is loving if there's boundaries yep. right i mean it's it's in every facet of life boundaries are a good thing right L rules and laws are a good thing that's and right. it is and it's not loving to have no laws that's right right yeah it's and, important and boys I mean, I do. I have boys. You you have a mixed bag over there with some boys and girls. But I just got one set up. But uh, I, I I I do a lot of study on boys, and they thrive yeah. with boundaries. Exactly. They do not do well with a free for all. Yeah. They but they thrive. They don't like it at first, but then when they have to stay within them, 
and it's not it's not it's it it, it 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 it's a boundary it's not a high fence it's a hey you can cross it there's just there's, there's just consequences, consequences. Yeah. there's <laughs> consequences to it and when kids get consequences especially boys they're like oh because now when i'm 18 19 and 20 going into college i can't i can't just i can't just physically uh, be with that girl. She says, no, I can't sexually say no. I don't care if you say, no. wait, there's actual things called physical assault, sexual assault, which you're seeing all these colleges. Now these rapes going on because these kids were raised with no consequences for boundaries. They did whatever they wanted and they don't get it where I want my boys to walk in to say, Hey, if you're five minutes late for work, eventually you're going to get fired. Yeah. So be on time. Like when a girl says no, it's no. It, 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 it when when it's the, our, and it's our nature to test the boundaries, right? right. It, it's, it's important for parents to realize, like they're going to test the boundaries and, and let them. And that's your job, right? Consequence. No, exactly. Like it's it's not good to keep them from experiencing these things. That's so right. Like it's it's not in, it's not your job to keep them from failing. That's right. Failure is where they learn. That's, that's right. like where your whole career teachable is. Teachable moments, it's man. All teachable moments, and yep. it's it's so applicable for everything. Yep. Um, I know we're short on on time, and I want to like go over, and I know that. Um, you're down the road, so we can do this again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like a, but I this is great stuff, right? And the mental aspect of things, I think, should be a normal conversation. I think it'd be great to do one of these all the time. Yeah, so I agree, too. Yeah, <clears throat> cool. I expand on some of this stuff in, in uh, all different Oh, classes. man, I think There's so great. much knowledge that 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 you and, and a lot of guys hold that, you know, it's it's an opportunity for you to share it. That's right, and 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 that's why we go through those things is to be able, and and you reach the highs of it. It's not the highs that um, were the teachable moments, right? That's there's, right. There's, there's reward in that. There's fun in that, and we can lose ourselves in that, and we can sit and focus. That that's all you know. We find our identity in that, but that's not where you find your identity. Right. Like you know, you. I remember the toughest times long before I remember you know some winning moments. I mean, that's there's right. some cool winning moments, and they were fun and there. And but you know that's in all different levels, right? Yeah, but the winning moments were developed because of the tough times. Exactly. That's exactly. where it was. And at. I wouldn't. As a common thing that I ask most guys, like, would you? Would you the, those moments that you failed or that you had the hardest times or whatever else? Would you would you go back and eliminate those? No, and, no I no would. I hated them. Yeah, I didn't love them. But they made you who you are. That's one hundred percent correct. Exactly. Absolutely, man. Thank you for the conversation. This was you great. Bet. Cool. Yeah, Thanks, we'll man. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. All right. All right. You want to close it out? You have to. Cool. Later. Awesome, man. You've been listening to the Go Time Podcast with Todd Martin. If you'd like to know more about the Go Time podcast, Todd Martin or Todd Martin Performance Horses, you can visit us at toddmartin.net, N-E-T. We're going to be putting up some merchandise on there too for the podcast. And also, please, if you get the time and you like it, share with a friend, give us a like and a review. I guess all that stuff kind of really helps and helps us get it out there to more people to be able to enjoy the podcast. So until next time, Go Time.